I've been playing the Back for Blood beta a lot since it was launched. I've been streaming it, making gameplay videos from it. I've, I've put in quite a lot of hours and I found out some things that I think you should know before you buy. So here are 20 things I've learned from the Back for Blood open beta. There's a central hub before you start a campaign or versus match. Here you can create card decks for the different game modes, buy new cards from the credits earned in game. Um, I'll actually go through the card system a little bit later. You can select campaign and versus multiplayer modes from there as well, but the best part for me is the shooting range. You can actually test out weapons available in game, along with the different attachments available for them. In the beta, you can try all weapons, but I'm guessing the full game will only show weapons that you've already unlocked. The shooting range is also great for testing the range of your weapons, which brings me on to my next point. The range of the shotguns are ridiculous. At one point I had a scope attached to one and I was getting long distance shots like a sniper rifle. The range is even ridiculous without the scope. Even the sword off double barrel shotgun has ridiculous range on it, so this is definitely something that needs some tweaking. Even if you don't mind it in the campaign, it's going to get really annoying in versus multiplayer. Sticking with weapons, there's a really good variety of them. Um, there are different types of shotguns, handguns, SMGs, assault rifles, sniper rifles, there's different fire modes like burst fire, semi-auto and full auto. Um, as mentioned earlier, there are also loads of different attachments available. There are scopes, different ammo types, stocks to improve stability, laser sights and silencers, um, different magazines to increase ammo capacity and reloading speed, and silencers which are definitely useful in a zombie game and you can attach them as soon as you find them just by picking them up there's no need to go to a workbench or safe house um, also the gunplay feels really good the gunplay feels more like call of duty rather than left for dead there's a card system in this game um, you've got corruption cards which are added at the start of each round by the game adding a challenge with a nice reward or something to make the game more difficult for example there's a card called silence is golden which will reward you with copper if you can complete the level without triggering any birds snitches or setting off any car alarms but then there are corruption cards that add right armor to um, ridden making them harder to kill and then there are cards which you activate yourself to help you in game um, things like improved health stamina um, using a knife um, as your quick melee weapon instead of your fists increasing your reload speed you and your team will have to select cards at the beginning of each level the game um, does give you a starter pack of cards to work with, but better cards become available as you play. You can access supply lines from the central hub and use credits um, that you've earned from playing the game to buy better cards. Then you can create custom decks which you can select cards from when starting the game. Um, as you complete more levels, more supply lines unlock, making more cards available for you to buy. Each player has five loadout slots, so you've got one for primary weapons such as assault rifle, SMG, um, shotgun or whatever main weapon you decide to go with, um, secondary weapons such as a sidearm, um, some small SMGs or melee weapons like bat, machete or axe. Um, you've got a slot for your throwables like your grenades, molotovs, um, pipe bombs and just like in Left 4 Dead, the rhythm will actually follow the beeping sound of the pipe bombs, making them all gather around it until it explodes. Um, alien items like painkillers, bandages and medkits, and you've got a slot for a support item. Now support items include toolkits for opening locked areas um, for special loot, defibrillators for quickly reviving fallen teammates. You can revive um, teammates without it, but it's, mu it's a much slower process and you leave yourself vulnerable for attacks. Um, you can even get a stun gun to free yourself if you get grabbed by one of the big tank monsters. Healing is a bit more complicated in this game than most other shooters. Now, players can experience something called trauma, which will prevent you from healing up to 100%, which can result in things getting a little tense. Now, bandages will heal a small amount of health, while health kits will heal a lot more. Painkillers will give you temporary health and you can find healing stations in mo most safe rooms. The healing stations are usually free for the first use, but then all others will cost credits. 
You can share resources with your team. Um, you can drop med kits and ammo for your team to collect when needed just by opening up your inventory and selecting which items you want to drop. This is especially useful when it comes to ammo, which brings me to my next point. You'll find ammo all around the level, but it may not be ammo for the weapon that you're using. I found this a lot. I would sometimes have an assault rifle equipped, but all I could find was shotgun shells or SMG, and gun or sniper ammo. This would usually result in me running out of ammo and having to fight my way through the odds with my fists, which didn't end well. Copper is the currency used in this game to buy goods at each safe house. Now you can find copper all around the different levels so keep an eye out and um, there's also a card which makes it easier for you to find them. Now before spending your copper on weapons make sure you check the safe house to see if there are any weapons laying around. There's been times when I've bought guns only to walk around the corner and find the same weapons or better. You can break through some wooden doors by shooting them, punching them or by using melee weapon. Now this is a good tactic if you just want to kill Ridden that's trapped behind the door as you can create a big enough hole just to shoot them through but be careful some doors have alarms which will alert nearby hordes. When you've been down by the Ridden you'll enter last stand mode allowing you to kill zombies until you either bleed out or you're revived. Now in this game you have unlimited ammo when in last stand so you can go down in a blaze of glory without running out of ammo. Now, if you've got a melee weapon equipped when you're downed, you can also use this during your last stand. Um, you can also be revived by your team if they can get to you before you bleed out. Each character has their own starting weapon, perk and team perk, so choose wisely. For example, Walker has increased damage and accuracy and also increased team health and carries a Glock, while Evangelo has increased stamina and breakout speed, increases team movement speed and carries a machete. Uh, melee weapons like the machete and baseball bat may sound cool and in most cases they are but getting back close in certain levels is not advised so make sure you also have a gun. There's also a stamina bar um, which will deplete when running and using melee weapons. There are currently three difficulty settings, there's survivor, veteran and nightmare. Now survivor difficulty is basically the easy mode. The only difficulty comes from getting overwhelmed from the number of ridden if your team deserts you. Um, veteran actually gives you a challenge as well as dealing with the ridden you also have to avoid shooting your teammates because friendly fire is also activated. Play this one with your friends because randoms online will more than likely quit the game when it starts getting tough. And as for nightmare, nightmare is just ridiculous. Damage is increased from friendly fire, ridden are even tougher and more aggressive. I never even managed to make it through a single round because players kept deserting me. It's just pure madness. If you're playing online with randoms, you will at some point find players who will drop out when the going gets tough, resulting in their positions being bot filled. And the bots in this game definitely need some work. When backing you up, they're not so bad, but the issue came from when I needed reviving. The bots would just surround me while I bled out and do absolutely nothing to help. I also found that I would get shot by bots, which isn't great considering friendly fire is enabled on two difficulty settings. On the plus side, if there is a bot still alive after all human players have died, a player can take control off that bot if they're quick enough. It has crossplay enabled um, between PC, Xbox and PlayStation, so this will at least make it easier for you to find your friends to play with. Anyone who spent a lot of time playing Left 4 Dead will remember the Witches and making every effort to avoid them. Now, in this game, you've got flocks of birds that will alert towards the Ridden if disturbed, and snitches which will do the same thing. But snitches don't actually attack either, so I'm actually wondering if there's going to be the equivalent to witches in this game who will alert towards but will also attack you and cause a lot of damage. If you die, your character becomes trapped on a wall somewhere close by, um, but will be labelled on screen as a bot. If your teammates can get to you, they can free you and get you back in the game but they'll still be leaving themselves open for attacks while they try they can also just try to get to the safe house and you know end the level and you'll respawn next level but that's if they can actually make it there 
You get three lives. If you die three times, it's game over and you'll start from the beginning of the level. If you kill the Ridden at close range, whether it's with a melee weapon or gun, you and your weapons are gonna get completely covered in blood. There were times when I ended up shooting my teammates because I actually mistook them for zombies. Also, when you get pissed off with randoms going AFK and you decide to and start shooting them, they will get covered in blood too. The Steam version seems well optimized for PC. I've got older hardware in need of an upgrade, so I was worried that it wouldn't be able to handle this game, but it's been running pretty smoothly. I'm running with DirectX 11 on high settings with Fidelity FX enabled, and it's running smoother silk with no lag, which is good news for anyone like me who's struggling to get hold of a new graphics card. And finally, the PS5 version makes use of the adaptive triggers. It's not to the same level as with Sony first party games, but there's different resistance for the different types of weapons. This also includes melee weapons like the axe and the machete. Now you don't get the rest of the aptics though, but it's still an extra touch for the PS5 version. So those are my 20 things I learned from the beta. Now I know I haven't included versus multiplayer in this, but that's because I didn't spend a lot of time playing that mode. Back for Blood will be released on the 12th of October on PS4, PS5, Xbox One and Series S and X and PC. It will also be available on day one on Xbox Game Pass for both console and PC. So that's where I'll be playing it. I should be doing a buy, avoid or wait for sale video for it where I'll be covering all game modes available. So come back and check the channel around that time. Now, if you've made it this far, I'm guessing you found the video useful so please help the video out by clicking the like button and if you're new to the channel click the subscribe button and also the notification bell so you see whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching.